Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Core exam. And if you're taking the Praxis Core exam, I pretty much assume that you are a person interested in becoming a teacher. So that's excellent. And this is an exam that you need to take um, for a lot of, a lot of schools to get into their teachers program. So, you know, just a forewarning, I'm a teacher myself. I've taken many Praxis exams. So this is just going to be one of probably multiple exams that you're going to take throughout your career. So you want to treat this with, um, you know, the highest uh, respect and don't assume anything. These exams are challenging and they should be because they're professional exams. So on the Praxis Core, uh, you know, they're going to be testing you with, for your basic knowledge, um, you know, your skill set so you can come into a, a teaching program. A math is a big component of this exam. So um, we're going to get going. I'm going to talk about this particular problem uh, because this, is, this problem is a nice little math problem here that will be indicative of the type of math you will need to know for the Praxis. Okay, you need to know qu uh, quite a bit for the Praxis Core uh, exam. So if you've been away from math for some time, even if you were good in math, you definitely need to do a review. So my background is I'm a math teacher, taught middle school through uh, college, have a degree in math, master's degree, so a lot of education, but guess what? You have to work at your education. You got to study, you got to review. Even if you, you know, know the subject matter or knew it well, you still need to review, okay? Now, if you're looking for a, a really good program uh, to study the math for the Praxis Core, I have an excellent, um, Praxis Core Math Prep Course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video. So if you find that you like my teaching style, I have a complete, really super comprehensive course you can check out if you want to. But with that being said, let's get into this problem here, okay? So I don't have a set of directions, but I'm going to explain the problem. So here I have a uh, circle when their part of the circle is blue, okay? So let's suppose we're over here and we're throwing darts, right? A little game of dart. Here's a little dart here. Okay, so let's say I throw a dart at this. Let's imagine this was hanging on a wall or whatnot. I want to know what's the probability that it lands in the blue section. Okay, so here's the um, situation. You got a circle. Here's the blue section. Uh, some information is given. Okay, you got a circumference of 16 inches, etc. So take a moment. I want you to think if you can solve this problem. And what formulas or knowledge would you need to know to um, to solve this problem? Okay, so if you want to pause the video, go ahead and do that. I'm going to start going over it now. All right, so this is, you know, when you approach a math problem, you know, obviously the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. It's because you have two types of, you have a decision here, okay? When you, rec when you look at the problem, they're like, oh, okay, I see circumference, I know these formulas, area equals pi r squared, circumference equals 2 pi r. You're like thinking to yourself, you got formulas in your head, and you're like, okay, you're just ready to use these formulas, okay? Now, if you start using these formulas, you can, you can solve this problem, but you're going to be solving it the long way, okay? You're going to be solving it the long way. There's an easier way an easy way to solve this problem, or a much easier way. So I'm gonna, um, I'll tell you what the easy way is here, and then we'll solve this the long way, because it's the long way is a good exercise in review um, for circle and algebra, uh, etc. okay? So the answer is one fourth, okay? You got a one, four, a one out of four chance of throwing a dart hitting this, okay? Uh, another way of saying that is you have a 25% probability of getting a start to land in that blue section. Now, why is that? Well, if you notice the circle here, w this is one quarter of the circle. Okay, you can see that because I said that this arc is 90 degrees, and here you have a right uh, angle indication. So you know, 90 degrees is one fourth of the total circle, which is 360 degrees. Okay, so basic definition of probability. So let's do it this way, the probability of blue. The definition, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the definition in, uh, with respect to this particular problem, is uh, how many ways can this start get in, how many ways can this event happen? Well, blue can happen out of the, t um, 
uh, landing in the blue area, blue region, can happen out of, uh, that is the event that we're looking to happen out of the total area of the circle. Let me just say that. It's a little better, okay? So out of the pies, if you want to think of the little pizza pies here, you can say, well, how many total pies are there? Well, there's four slices and just one of them is blue, All right? So I'm kind of just doing a real fast review, discussing some probability, but this is the general concept. So this would be looking at the problem in an easy way. However, if some of you started, you know, breaking out these formulas, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to start, I can figure this out, you know, I know how to work with circle formulas, etc. Then you can still get to the uh, right answer, but it's going to be much more uh, involved, all right? And this is what you have to be careful about with math. It's like, you know, it's, well, math in these particular type of test settings you know, you, you know, the test um, makers are, cons are setting things up <laughs> to make you think. Now, you as a teacher are going to find that out. You know, when you are teaching your subject, uh, maybe one day you're going to become a math teacher, you're not just going to give your students easy, direct problems. Some of your problems are going to be that way, you know, on the test that you create. But others, you're going to want to, you know, have a higher order thinking, you know, so they can see if they synthesized, etc. And that's the kind of thing that you want to be thinking about with this particular test. So the more math you know, the more you study, the more you practice, the better you're going to be thinking about these problems. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, solve this problem the long way, just because it's kind of good mathematical fun. All right, so here I'm thinking, okay, I got the circumference. I need to find the area. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. The circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, or the diameter times the radius, but I don't have the radius, I only have the circumference, and the circumference again is just the distance around the circle, okay, you can kind of think of it as the perimeter of a circle. Okay, so we, we're given 16 inches as the um, circumference. So let's go ahead and figure out what the radius is, all right, so the circumference is 2 pi r, so the circumference is 16, this is the formula, so it's going to be 2 pi r. Now I'm going to be using just, I'm not going to, um, I'm going to be working with pi, okay? You'll see how my symbology goes here. To solve for r, I have to divide both sides by 2 pi. So when I simplify this, I'm going to get 8 pi as the radius, okay? So my radius here is equal to 8 pi inches in this case but I don't really need the inches but let's just write it for good order anyways all right so now let's find the area of this circle okay so the area equals pi r squared so the area is equal to pi now the radius again here is now we just found it is 8 over pi squared so this is just a good exercise in algebra so remember your order of operations. I need to square this first. This is going to be pi times 8 pi, 8 over pi squared is going to be 64 over pi squared. Okay, this is my area. And I can simplify. I can take one pi and I can cancel out this pi here. I can cancel out one of the pi's down in this denominator. So the area of the circle is 64 over pi. So the total area total area is equal to 64 over pi. Now the reason why I'm doing this is just this is like a good workout for your algebra skills. So if you're like comfortable doing this math and you're, you're, you're following what I'm doing then that's outstanding. Okay now so we have that but I now want to know what what is the area of this blue portion there. Okay well, it's going to be one-fourth, maybe you figured that out, it's going to be one-fourth of what that is, okay? So the blue area is going to be one-fourth of the total area, so it's going to be one-fourth times 64 over pi, okay? So the blue area is going to be equal to 16 over pi, okay? Yeah, 4 goes into 64, 16. All right, so now I have the blue area. I have the total area. So the probability, remember, the probability of you landing on blue is going to be the area. When you're dealing with um, probability and area problems, it's always going to be the little area that you're, that the probability 
uh, it's asking the probability of that event occurring. So in this case, it's the blue area over the, over the total area. So let's go ahead and calculate this. So the probability of getting your little dart in, in the blue region is going to be the area of the blue region, which is 16 over pi, 16 over pi, divided by the total area, which we have here is 64 over pi. 64 over pi. So now we gotta figure this out. Let me kinda of scoot this over here. So this is a complex fraction, so I have this fraction being divided by, let me use a different color, by this fraction, okay? So I have 16 pi being divided by 64 over pi. Now, division of fractions, I need to flip this guy over and turn this into a multiplication problem. So this is 16 over pi times pi over 64. Now look what happens. The pi's cross cancel and end up with 16 over 64 or 1 fourth. Okay, this is the long way. But I wanted to do both ways because this is, I could have um, made this problem a little bit difficult, right? If I, if I didn't have this little right angle here and I said this was 67 degrees now this the whole this whole thing changes because now we have to find the area of the uh, the sector and you would have to go through all this algebra okay but you know the point is is that you know you're you're going to become a teacher right you no know, irrespective of what you know um, subject you're going to want to be you know you're going to be teaching you still need to know math okay and if you're definitely going to uh, be uh, you know science related or whatnot you, you you certainly you know are going to know math and that I'm sure goes with your undergrad uh, background but for the praxis core you know uh, take this exam uh, seriously all right I remember when I took uh, the praxis uh, to teach you know high school level mathematics you know it was it was something you had to study for you know for sure I mean it was calculus and all that kind of good stuff on there and the questions are excellent as they should be again this is a pro, uh, professional exam all right okay so let's go and wrap this video up now if you like my teaching style I literally have hundreds and hundreds of uh, videos on my YouTube channel that will benefit you for the uh, practice course so hopefully you consider subscribing Again, if you want to check out my full, complete, comprehensive course on the Praxis Core, um, I'll leave the link in the description below. If you like this video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. It's the way I know uh, how I'm doing, and it gives me your, your comments, give me um, ideas for future videos. But, um, you know, as one teacher speaking to another one, and I've been you know, teach for many, many years. It's one of these things that you're going to get just better at. And 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 for those of you, you know, um, uh, who have not been a teacher, who maybe you're watching this video, it's this is a it's a challenging profession. Okay, it is a challenging profession. A lot of, sometimes you know teachers don't get the respect <laughs> they might get, but you're gonna you know you'll definitely find out. You know, it takes a lot of education, a lot of commitment, but there is a lot of reward also being a teacher, and that's why I'm in education because I love helping people and I love teaching uh, mathematics. But with that being said, I wish you all the best on the practice core. Thank you uh, for spending a little time with me, and have a great day.